warm seas of the South Pacific Ocean lie New Zealand's tropical islands. Rarotonga, Aitutaki and Mangaia, Mitiaro, Manahiki, 14 surf-ringed islands of the Cook Group, vivid with the colour and legend of the South Sea. The great Pacific trade routes pass them by, but they're no longer separate from the rest of the world. Today, old and new stand side by side in the Cook Islands. The ancient Polynesian culture is making room for the European way of life. The 20th century visitor comes in over the age-old coral to land on the airstrip at Rarotonga, centre and largest of the Cook Islands. It's come 1,600 miles from Wellington, New Zealand, over to the furthest outlying part of the Dominion, bringing supplies, probably, and travellers bound for a tropical holiday. If they're looking for glamour and gaiety, they'll meet with all they could wish for as they first land, for plain days, a big event on the island. Supplies brought by the plane will go to Avarua for distribution. It's the main township of Rarotonga and the seat of New Zealand's Cook Islands administration. Most of the trade comes in by sea though, and this too comes by way of Avarua. And here they load copra and the harvest of oranges, pineapples and bananas that make up the outward stream of the trade flow. Leaving Avarua, a number of little roads run into the centre of the island and the sea is soon lost to view as the dense tropical bush closes in. The roads, some of them dwindling to mere tracks, wind round to native villages, usually neat collections of huts built of leaves from the Fendana's palm and coconut wood. Round this one there's plenty of activity, but it's quite usual to see an entire village deserted during the working hours of the day while all its population works in the fields. grow abundantly in the Cook Islands, and the Polynesian has based his life for centuries on the care of the Earth's products. This is Kumara growing on the high ground, and here in rich swampy lands, Neri and Konini are cultivating the taro root, staple food of many of the islanders. A nursery of orange saplings starting out on a journey through long tropical summers till it yields its first harvest in five or six years' time. Waving heads of coconut palms mean food for the people or cash value for their copra yield. Long leaning trunks tower above the orange groves, yet the smallest urchin can reach the harvest in the far off leaves. Down on the ground his sisters collect and husk the nuts. Hard work sometimes, or a contest needing skill with sharp stakes. Sometimes just to enjoy a cool drink. The islander has a tremendous capacity for enjoyment, and new occupations haven't killed the pleasure he takes in his traditional entertainments, his songs and dances. The steady rhythm of this drum dance is a relic of an old celebration when a ship was sighted coming over the sea.
songs and dances reflect the rhythm and pace in the islander's blood. He has love of colour and adornment too that mirrors the lavish colour of his living surroundings. Exotic blooms are common as wildflowers. Ixora, frangipani, tipani they call it, and flamboyant, the native tamarini. roadsides, in bush clearings. The flowers that Miriam is picking are a common weed, and these children are making garlands of the luxurious hibiscus, flourishing just about as freely. life of a few hours when they'll be used to decorate the graves in the cemetery for the festival of All Saints Day. Children at play in a convent school. Here healthy young bodies develop in open surroundings and young minds take in something of two worlds, of the 20th century and the problems it brings to the islands, and of their own world with its history remembered in song and story. Here in the schools they sing and draw, they learn sewing and wood carving, they hear about kings and queens and Polynesian heroes. They learn too the island handicrafts, how to make the brilliant tivaivai, bed covers they see the women working at. This is communal work in the Polynesian tradition. It would take one pair of hands about a year to make one of these. Their method sets down a group of chattering women to work together, laughing and talking the trivialities of any sewing circle. and weaving palm fronds finds a hundred uses. Mats for their huts, gifts for the honoured guests. Deft fingers with the craft bred into them twist these strands into a basket, deep-shaped and sturdy, to carry supplies from the store, fruit from the plantation, fish from the sea. <laughs> The islander is a seafarer by upbringing, by ancestry. Wherever his home, it's never very far from the sea. Its depths offer him food for the taking, and on the reefs there are fish for his spear. The cutting edges of brilliant coral seem to make no impression on the iron-hard soles of his feet. Round the submerged coral, the shellfish power is plentiful, and Makaya here joins a group of underwater swimmers at work prizing the power off the rock sides. Further over on the reef, another group have found an octopus. No epic struggle with a monster of the deep. It takes only one well-placed bite to kill it. And a much sought-after mouthful that bite is. In 
encircling all the islands, the rampart of the reef breaks the force of the Pacific, providing the islander with a hunting ground for the spoils of the sea, giving him also a playground for its sport. Trade winds across the lagoon at Aitutaki fill out the sails of a fleet of canoes. Light craft calling for skill in handling and a knowledge of the special rigging the Aitutaki sailors use. There's little scope left today for the spirit of adventure that sent these people across uncharted seas to find their lands of Polynesia. But the sea and the work and pleasure of the sea will be always in their blood. They can't equal their ancestors' achievements in one of history's great migrations, but it's as children of the sea that they sing their songs of these great voyages and dance their traditional dances. <laughs> goes down brilliantly in the Cook Islands. Evening leaves the lagoon filled with a soft light, a romantic light, part of these islands with their story of romance. The story of a people who won their land from the ocean and developed a way of life that was rich and colorful. The story of the Cook Islands.